Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. It is time for part seven in the road to Zenvo. Of course, we're here at Zenvo's HQ in Presto in Denmark, but wait for today's update. As usual, they've kindly blown the Union Jack alongside the flag and supports of Ukraine. But something I always wanted to do was to come here with one of my cars. And of course, we have now come here with two of them on the Wear Shmi Tour with the SF90 Stradale, which at this point has not even yet obviously been home. It's never been to this museum, even though it's done nearly three and a half thousand kilometers at this point. But today is, of course, time for a big update with the TSRS, the future Schmiemobile hypercar, which has made some huge progress. The engine is in, most of the body panels are there, the interior is ready to be installed. So let's head straight on inside and go and check this out. A big update with the TSRS. <laughs> There are few words for quite how exciting this journey is, the road to Zenvo. And I've been here a few times now from announcing this purchase to going through the specification to seeing parts of the car in action. For example, the manufacturing of the carbon fiber wheels and quite how light those are that I've chosen to have on it, to seeing some of the panels being painted, to the last update where the car had arrived in the production hall on the assembly line, seeing it physically for the first time in its very early stages and taking a look as well at the engine, the gearbox, the clutch and some of the carbon fiber parts well safe to say things have moved on quite a lot since the last update it is now looking more like a full car but to have this opportunity the road to zenvo here with the team is so exciting and to be able to bring you along as well so we'll come through and take a look at that but one thing very quickly even the door handles are made with carbon fiber with the zenvo logo in the middle of that really really awesome but come on through here in the assembly hall have a look down there the car, loads of the different parts to take a look at today. The interior trims, the carbon fiber, even the seat shell, as you can see. But this is my TSRS taking shape. You can see the engine and gearbox have gone in and we're gonna run through all of these in a lot more detail today. But come on round where we've got many more of the body panels in the doors, for example, the paint that we made, Lila Perlamore, Mother of Pearl Purple. We've got lots of the exposed carbon fiber, particularly with these amazing graphics with the inverted weave that you can see there, the Zenvo logo through the lower door panel. We've got the Lime Grand accents, found all around and obviously the installation around here of the front clam oh come and have a look at this front end look at this this is so good this is amazing to see it coming to life exactly as per the renders that we made of this car the exposed purple tint on the bonnet section the car literally being worked on at the moment as well this is looking absolutely immense now on the inside obviously you can see a few components are in this is actually a slave dashboard for the moment because my dashboard is on this table just over beside us over this way that we can come and take a look at and see i think for the first time the result of the uh, choices carefully doing this with the anodized green vents around the painted accents that we have across the dash as well and you can also see with the alcantara pads over the top that purple stitching, which brings some of the exterior color to the interior of the car. If I just leave that carefully for the moment and come back over towards this way, we have lots of the interior parts. We're gonna run through these in a moment, but in particular, I want to show you this. We've had a look at the composites and the carbon fiber manufacturing here at Zenvo before, but this is of course one of the seats and it weighs very, very little, so little in fact, that coming over to the scale just here, sorry, it's hard to read on the screen at the moment, it will lighten up when we put this down on it, set for 0.0, .0. pop this down, carefully does it, and we have a seat that weighs 3,466 grams, less than three and a half kilos for the full carbon shell of the seat. That's how far this goes in terms of weight savings with all of the different components, for example, carbon under trays, so many carbon parts. But I think to understand a little bit more of this, we're gonna be joined by Christian, head of design, to discover what else is going on, the progress that's been made with it, and a full update with my TSRS. Hi Tim, welcome back. We've done amazing progress since you were here the last time. Things have certainly moved on quite a lot with the car, but also yeah. the interior. The interior is here. Uh, we've got a lot of pieces uh, sitting on this uh, table, which is about to be installed. Um, the 
fantastic thing about this interior is you went for this style that we have done on many of our cars that we've done a sort of asymmetrical design so that the, the, the driver's side is sort of uh, highlighted compared to the passenger side. And in case with your car, you've gone for the uh, black leather with the purple uh, stitching and purple per perforation in the passenger side. And on the driver's side, you have the more sort of uh, loud and vibrant uh, green uh, design. It's amazing to see these because we obviously spent a lot of time and brought the audience along for this journey with choosing the specifications. Yes. And it's quite hard to imagine what this is going to look like in its final form. It is. Um, it starting is. from the samples, right? It is, yeah. And I think if we, if we see here again these two uh, panels, they are for the, uh, for the doors of the car. And, um, and you can see that there's a great difference between this little sample, which was the one we were looking at, um, which is basically, uh, uh, it's, a, it's actually a green leather that the, the final surface treatment is black. And then once you do the perforation, you can see that you get this, you can see the, the thickness of the leather through the holes and you get that sort of green, green impression, but it's still very flat. Whereas once we've created the, the final piece, because there's uh, foam behind the leather, this makes the leather sort of um, sort of come out like this in these sort of uh, bumps, and this of course means that the, you know the, you, all of a sudden you get light in through the holes and you see that green color much more. And it's um, actually amazing, especially with the purple, how much more of that you see because we were trying to match yes. the leather-backed colors with the stitching to make yes. sure it would all work. Yes, exactly. And and the, I remember when we were looking at the uh, the purple sample like this because the, the purple is relatively dark, it, you really didn't see the color of the holes, mm. but you do now once it's, it's, it's all stitched up. And, and one thing I want to I wanna tell you about this is, is this type of uh, stitching is normally something you do on a, on a, on, with a computer uh, programmed machine, but this is actually hand stitched. So of course he's using a sewing machine, but he's basically setting the needle down, going like this, turning, going like this, turning, going like this, going all the way back to zero. And then he has to pull the thread down to, on the back side, fix that, and then do the next one. So you can imagine it's, it's like hours of work. Yes. If, he, if, he, if he goes one stitch too far out on the leather here, there will be a hole and it will be destroyed. So he has to do a new one. So, you know, he wow. has to really, if somebody comes and pats his back while he's doing this, it's just <laughs> really all bad. So you have to get this whole panel done in one single piece. Yes, yes. It's really, it's really, um, yeah, it's, re it's super difficult work. And then this really beautiful etching that is applied as well. Mm. This is like, like, this is, this is the best sort of craftsmanship within, within automotive that you can imagine. It's yeah. really, I'm really, really, really proud of this. Ultimate level of bespoke. And these are the door card inserts. Yes. That must be the center tunnel. That's the center tunnel armrest. Yeah. And um, there are pieces already installed in the car, yeah. um, which is the, Asymmetrical ceiling pieces. They're also two different right. colors. Uh, so maybe we can uh, we can go and have a look at that here Inside up on the roof. Yeah. Oh, yes <laughs> So you can see that the driver side is green and the passenger side is is purple and um, I'm super Happy about this uh, color combination at the end because if you had two colors where they were sort of um, how can I say um, competing with each other, I think yeah. it would be a problem. But the, the purple is so much more toned down and is fitting completely with the, with the paintwork of the car. So that whole passenger side, of course, there will be purple, but it's very subtle. And then you have that, that green in the, in the, in the driver's side, which is, which is much more vibrant. Which um, mi mixes with this kind of flash of green you have around the exterior. The, yeah. But also, I spotted the uh, sun visors. Yeah, the sun visors is the same. The uh, driver's side sun visor has the green uh, stitching and the passenger one has the purple. So, I mean, this is, you know, this is what we do. We, we tailor every single piece of the interior to, to, uh, to you know, to your specifications. And it might sound silly to say it, but I actually hadn't <laughs> considered that kind of, I mean, I mean, obviously we went through it on the configurator. Yeah, we chose yeah, yeah. things like having the green yeah. S on the logo, yeah. but the exact specifics of doing the sun visors as well as the, the roof, yeah. it's all of those extra little elements that, that make it so bespoke. Absolutely. I, and I mean, I, I spot other flashes of color here, so I suppose we should have a look at what other components we have. Absolutely. This is a lot of components for, for you know, the, this is the, uh, basically the covers for the A-pillars. Mm -hmm. It's all finished in black Alcantara. Uh, these are the, the B pillar covers where the um, we can imagine the uh, seat, belt. seat belts are coming out. Uh, this panel is sitting on the 
on the it's a sort of a where you where you where you rest your leg or your knee when oh, you're okay. driving. So that's for the driver side, and and this is for the passenger side. So again, they're also with mm -hmm. with the uh, color matching uh, stitches. And these cutouts are for those. Yeah, that's a little pocket for your phone. Mm -hmm. um, this is the the sort of the hat over the instrument cluster. So again, the, the dashboard stitching is purple. So this is also purple. Yeah, um, we went for the purple stitching, so we don't have so much by way of reflection. Yes, exactly. Of the dashboard. This is the uh, the inside of the door handle. So where you grab is is nice yes. Alcantara as well. Okay. Um, there's a little tray there for the center console. Um, this is the uh, luggage compartment floor or the mm -hmm. the, the base. Um, steering column. Steering column, and, and, and then this is the uh, the steering wheel itself, which is which is uh, nice. also with the green, and of course matching the the, 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 the the driver side. It's it's funny to think about it, but obviously to find the leather that would match with the stitch, all of these details were not easy. No, they were not. To make it right, this is really nice. Yeah. Full Alcantara with the carbon at the base. Yes. I cannot wait until that is installed. <laughs> that will be a day we are all looking forward to. That is really, really, uh, yeah, that's really cool stuff. But that's not it. I think we've got some other parts around. Yeah, here we have as well. the uh, we have the dashboard over here, and and again, there's especially I think this 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 sort of corner over here, which was something we talked about also in the last video. I think when I when I you know set in this this green uh, frame of the the vent but now we have everything assembled so we got the nice anodized green vent together with the purple stitch and also this purple uh, highlight that we that we put on the on the carbon fiber which is the color of course of the exterior yeah and again that's that's very subtle but it's just super elegant and and you know maybe it's something when when the car is when you're inside the car this will is quite dark so you won't really see it then w once you open the door and you have sun coming into the mm -hmm. car this is going to light up and you'll see that match with the exterior paint and it's all under the lacquer and Absolutely, this is lovely. Com completely smooth. And we also um, have some more parts down below at the moment. Absolutely, this is the um, this is the center frame uh, for the uh, for the vents, which is also keeping the um, the iPad in place, which is our in infotainment system. So that's going to go in here, and then once the iPad is installed, it's yes. covering the center part, so you don't have all that green. You basically just have that the frame, like green. like like you have on the on the sides. I like the mix of different looks. It's it's funny when you take a, an entire dashboard as a separate piece, because we're yeah. all more familiar with seeing that inside a car where you don't yeah. look perhaps at all of the details, but yeah. the mixture yeah. of the paint, the gloss exposed carbon, the anodized finish, the, the suede Alcantara look obviously over the top. Yeah. It's quite it is, nice. It is quite nice. I mean, we, you know, so one of the things we've, we've discussed, uh, some of our, you know, friends, competitors in the industry, when they're doing special versions, they would possibly I mean, and you could have gone for painting these in the same yeah. in the same green as the accent lines, but I just find that this 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 anodized finish, when it's interior, it just has a nice quality. If it's mm -hmm. painted, it looks a little bit like plastic, and you don't get the yep. same sort of quality. So even though it's not, of course, you you can't match anodizing with paint. It will never be exactly the same color, but it is the same color that it's based on, so this is as yeah. close as it gets. Just with a different kind of look. Yeah. And then we've got more of the interior parts as well. There are Something. some pieces down here, yeah. This is the, the long bit there, is the, um, is the basically the, the tunnel cover. Yeah. Um, the thing to the right is the cluster um, frame for, ah, the, for, yeah. the, for the instrument cluster. Yeah. Behind that is the is more sort of the armrest area uh, yep. where the gear shift uh, situation and key is sitting, and the two bits as here is is the is basically the floor floor pan for the. Um, so this, yeah, is, this is passenger is, side, I guess. No, this is driver side. So you have. Oh, uh, of course, pedals. Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah. What am I looking at? Left, left, left steering. So the yeah the base there's the there's a stop here for the accelerator and there's a footrest and then you have your your brake situation in the middle there. So all all carbon fiber. Yeah, they're all weighing very little. It's hard to kind of put in perspective, but all of it's, these... It's like super lightweight. Absolutely. So the passenger side then has the cutout. Yes, for that's yeah. the fuse yeah. box area. Fuse box, uh, amplifier and stuff like that. Yeah. Makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's exciting to see, and I guess it's not going to be too long until all of that has made its way into the car. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of other things that we should take a look at with the car as it is right now. In particular, something very exciting going on up here. But to explain all in a bit more detail, we are joined by Tobias from the engineering team here at Zenvo. Hi, Tim. Yeah, I'm super excited to, to show you our new inlet manifold. This is clever uh, stuff. I could take this away. You can see it's, uh, it's all individual barrel throttle bodies. Uh, 
which is derived from uh, from racing technology really uh, where you, you don't have a pin disturbing the the flow so when you're you're fully opening the throttles you have nothing in the way so it's it's flowing really nicely and uh, it's also uh, really good for emissions uh, to have uh, individual throttle bodies so this is basically new formula one tech more or less uh, formula one tech the meant for the for the street if, if you want yeah. yes so you have to make kind of everything quite bespoke for that but this exactly. is done keeping up with homologation emission standards all of that side of things yeah uh, keeping up with, with emission standards and also uh, also making it more comfortable on the road with uh, less less jerking mm -hmm. than uh, than than what we had before the pursuit for performance always uh, this one uh, is, is really uh, pursuing uh, performance but uh, but but still uh, keeping the car more more road friendly than than yeah. we used to it Okay, so this will change sometimes that feeling, I guess, all linked to the dog box when you're shifting and... Exactly, the, the dog box uh, might uh, make the, the car more jerky right after a, a gear shift than, than you would want on a, on a road car. Uh, where you know this... Uh, uh, yeah, feeling. Like on a race car, exactly. like I experience when exactly. I drive in a race car. Uh, and having that combined with, uh, with a relative large amount of air in, in front of the throttles, uh, can, can make the jerking even worse. So we've really uh, been minimizing the amount of air we have to, 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 to uh, or that we have in front of the throttles here. Mm -hmm. which and all, is all of that's eventually going to be housed in a beautiful carbon fiber piece. Exactly. Just like on the race car over yes. there. Now, while we're here, one other thing that stood out to me as being a little bit different from anything I'm familiar with, mm -hmm. the carbon surrounds around the brake discs. Yeah, um, because your car is going to have uh, carbon rims, uh, we, uh, we're installing these, uh, these heat shields in front of the carbon rim. Yep. Uh, because normally when, when you're driving, there's, there's no issues not having this uh, heat shield. But when, you're, when you've been driving hard and you have really hot brake discs and you didn't come to a stop, yep. the radiating heat can, uh, can heat up the, the carbon rim. And uh, that's, that can affect the structural strength of the, yep. of the carbon and, and, and the, the resin in, in the carbon. Which is why I think cars like the SF90 and the Pista with their wheels and my GT500 Shelby, which has carbon wheels, they all have this coating around the inside. Exactly. It's more or less a, a reflective coating, so you don't get too much of this radiation heat. Right, that makes sense. And I guess you can probably finish it slightly differently. We can finish it how you want in here, but... but this one can take the heat. It's not so much about that. It's just that the mechanical strength is worsened, mm -hmm. which doesn't really matter on this bit since it's yep. not taking any load. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, whereas, of course, if you were to put it on the wheel, you'd also have it on the rotating. Exactly. No. This, is, uh, this is a way to, uh, to avoid having the weight of the shielding uh, as rotating mass. Yeah. There's some clever stuff here. I mean, that's just two things, inlet and brake cooling but small parts of a very complex system that I'm sure is always evolving. And so, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Must be quite fun to work kind of from an engineering perspective on this, at this end of the spectrum. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always uh, keeping up with uh, homologation and uh, trying to, to enhance small stuff that, that, that we might be able to. Yeah. yeah, to make the best possible car. Well, I am very excited to experience how that's going to feel. Um, hopefully not too long from now. Thank you for showing us around. No problem, Tim. It's quite fun to be around all of these parts, you know, obviously steering wheel, kind of imagine what it's gonna be like to drive this car in the not too distant future. Today, we've been running over a few final things about the specification, also planning what we're gonna be doing with it, when hopefully we'll be able to reveal all. But while we're here, I'm gonna pop open the front clam, this gigantic piece, which you might have seen in some of the earlier videos with the TSRS opens out towards the front. And we can see obviously a little bit more of what's inside here, the fans and the carbon shields that surround them. Even the details like the carbon for around the headlight frame and obviously being able to see much more of the mechanical stuff and what's inside here. All quite cool to be able to see up close like this. But obviously there's still a fair bit more to go. Hopefully there'll be a return visit to see even more. But for today, 
pretty epic to have been able to have a bit of an update, see some of the interior parts like the dashboard, and of course, see the car with significantly more purple in place. But for now, that's it for today's update in the Road to Zenvo series. Stay tuned for what's gonna be coming next. I cannot wait. Thanks as always for your support, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.